Hi everyone, my name is Deepa. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to pass the ISO 13485 Lead Auditor Examination. My name is Deepa. I've been working in corporate industry for almost 19 years. So I work in, I'm a computer engineer by profession. Once I started working, I worked in pharmaceutical companies and also medical devices companies. And then I worked in R&D, quality, compliance area, and also in program management. So a different vast area. When you are in medical devices, ISO 13485 is something you always hear about because that is the quality management system that is any medical device needs to comply with. The way I'm going to structure this video is I'll like to talk about why the lead auditor examination, then why I took this examination specifically from Oriel Stat and also how to pass this examination. These are going to be the three structures that I'm going to talk in this video. So if you are in the process of receiving or going for an ISO 13485 lead auditor exam, and then I hope this is helpful. By the way, I passed the examination, so now I'm a lead auditor. That is one of the reasons I want to make this video. When I tried to, when I was taking these courses and try to find this information, I was not able to get this information. They were all talking about the ISO 13485, all those things. But how do you pass an examination for this is something that they didn't talk about. So I thought if someone is going in this, is in the same area, then it will be helpful for them. So let's go with first thing. First, why this lead auditor examination and why Oriel stat? Um, so like I said, when I, I, I just in, I told you about my background, right? When I was in the compliance space, mostly uh, they, we go and audit medical devices within our company. And also we were doing a lot of audits. So I spoke to one of the person in this group, in that group, he was a director. And uh, I, for to me, I consider him as one of the best because he is so well versed in the medical devices, the language about, around that, everything. So when I asked him, hey, is there any certification that you have taken for this auditor? Uh, this I'm talking about four years ago. He explained to me that this ISO 13485 audit is really good because it's not just for the medical device audit. It just teaches you how to audit. And also it, ex it gives you this medical devices area and it's very helpful. And he, the one thing he told me just stayed with me forever. He said, I have done around 400 audits before this. And then after taking this uh, uh, course, I realized what I made mistake in the, all those 400 audits. So I, uh, then I asked him, okay, well, many people provide this examination. Where do you take this examination? He specifically said Oriel stack. So what I did was uh, four years forward, um, I was thinking, okay, now this is the time I wanted to do it. At that time I couldn't do because of the budget constraints or anything within the company. This time I thought I will do it myself. I'm going to pay for it and take this because I feel like it's going to help me with my career. So I reached out to Oriel Stat and then I um, took those, I asked them I'm going to take this program. Now there are two ways they offer the program. One is virtual delivery and another one is in-person um, class. I cannot go in person class because uh, it's it's for either in Chicago or New Jersey and then you have to stay and on top of whatever you're paying for the course, you have to pay for the stay and all that. So I didn't want to do that. I wanted to go for the virtual. Now I have, I've been an auditor myself because our company trained us on that, but I wanted to take this specific um, audit. That's why I wanted to, this specific training. That's why I wanted to go here. So it's not that I'm new to the audit. So anyway, I preferred virtual delivery. And then what I did was I asked them whether they would give me discount, discount, because I'm going to put it from my pocket because most of the time, these kind of trainings are paid by the company itself. So it's a very different uh, scenario. But for some people like me, where I want to pay my own money, I just wanted to see if they're going to give me any uh, discount. That would be great. So they gave me a 10% discount because I'm going to pay it from my pocket. So they said, okay, that's fine. They did it. So very grateful for that so the next step is once i um, applied it and then they will tell you like okay it starts now if you're going for an in-person class then it is like five days but if you're going for a virtual class it's nine days nine days is like one to five p.m like four hours for nine days and there is an examination they keep a lot of quiz in between and then there is an examination you have to pass that examination 70% and then only you will get the certification that you have passed the examination. So you're a lead auditor. So this is the 
this is the process for me i have taken two masters i'm a, i have a masters in computer science i have a masters in quality assurance and regulatory affairs i've taken lot of courses lot of classes even with all that going to a class going to a class and listening to a lecture is a nightmare for me because most of the professors are not engaging uh sometimes they just talk 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 and then you are just bored to death you are like oh my goodness i am physically present most of the time mentally absent right that is how i'm used to even though from a person coming from i've taken all these classes all these programs so i was little skeptical on how my goodness how this class is going to be four hours every day for nine days and examination what's it going to be and it's been a while since i took examination if you fail this examination you can retake that so anyway i talked to you about why oriel stat why this elite auditor examination um, this what right uh, and also one more thing i want to tell i'm not paid by this oriel stat like i said i paid my own money i just wanted to provide this uh, my experience so that it helps others who are on the same uh, line uh, i'm not going to share any proprietary information because iso 1348 i'm not going to talk about that or oriel stat uh, materials i will never talk about that because they are all proprietary information but if you are taking it then how do you pass it is what i'm going to focus on so it's mostly my viewpoint so now what next let's talk about the classes itself right so uh, usually when i went it was a small group uh, depends on how many uh, you can either be in a larger group smaller group uh the person who was uh, the professor who was providing this information he used to work in a company i always like when people who have experience talking about that because they always bring in practical knowledge and lot of stories with that so you can connect your theory with the with your knowledge with practical knowledge which really helps just the theory means maybe means nothing but when theory and uh, the the practical knowledge comes together it works a lot so the professor was very highly knowledgeable he was really great and the nine days went so quickly it was never a boring day like i said for a person who's coming from oh my god how the class is going to be i'm like wow it's great and there were lot of um, you know uh, breakout sessions so whatever he teaches he's going to uh, have in the breakout session you have to create a audit plan you have to talk with other people to create non conformities and all those things so anyway it was really great now to pass this examination this is why i think you will be watching this video to pass this examination you just need two actually three things one iso 13485 now they may not hand it hand over your uh, they might give you a electric electronic copy if you don't have one but if you are working in a company you might already have a copy of that so you will have that copy with you so that is one thing that's very important because some of the questions and everything comes from that like uh, some some line items from that so you need to you need to have that the second thing is the the course work that they teach even though iso 13485 uh, you need they will tell you how to audit this qms and how to audit comes from the complete uh, pdf copy or pdf for some course work powerpoint presentation the company the oriel stat will provide you during if you are registered for that class so you need that so that's the second thing so you have these two third you need to be physically present and also mentally present that's very important because sometimes you might hear this term right where you are physically present mentally absent if you are mentally absent you will not pass this examination so you have to be physically present and mentally present also because some things that the professor will say some things that you learn from the breakout sessions all those things will connect together during the examination and not only that for the examination not only the marks count but your part participation all those things counts also so you have to be both physically and mentally present in that examination uh, not in those classes so these three things are very important now comes the most important part even with all this the struggle that i had with all the quiz so they keep quizzes every single every other day the problem that i had was the iso 13485 that you receive from the office or you receive the electronic copy it's a pdf copy right you cannot search it so even though i am thorough i have read that iso 13485 10000 times i don't remember every line item by heart okay so what happens for me is 
when they are asking like okay this clause where is it from i have to take that word that copy uh, electronically or uh, pdf copy and i have to go line by line item for the 45 page document it takes a lot of time you only have 30 minutes or 40 minutes to write that entire exam entire quiz and here i'm here with that and i'm going over that line by line so it was troubling it was giving me nightmare the second problem is the pdf copy that they provide even though it is searchable, the, the coursework, right, the PowerPoint they provide, like the course, like every single uh, thing that they provide, it runs for 300 to 400 pages. And even if you search that, say, for example, they're asking you what should be in an audit plan and that information is in that PowerPoint somewhere and you know, but you still want that information, right? You do control F and you search. The problem is that audit word might be in 300 pages. So you have to go through the 300 pages to come up with your answer. Find out it's a nightmare, another nightmare. So even though you know you want to um, you want to see it like where is it? Because it's an open book examination. If I, if I forgot, uh, maybe I forgot to tell you it's an open book examination. Open books are always the toughest because you have the book there, but you don't have time is always against you. So anyway, so I have to go over that. So th this is the second problem that I had. The third one, like because I'm physically present and mentally present, I never had the third problem. Any other questions like how do you, is this a non-conformity or not? What you have to do? Professor gives you clear details and I write that. That's not a problem. But these two were a nightmare for me. And this contains about like 50 to 60% of your examination. So this is what I did. I got, uh, uh, I went online, I was thinking about it for a very long time and I did PDF, that is something called PDF simply, meaning it will take your PDF copy and just convert into a searchable copy, uh, like a word copy, all right? So it is searchable, that's all, nothing else. You don't, you can't do many things with it, but it's searchable. So I converted my ISO 13485 into a PDF simply using that. It's like what, $4? That's four dollars, or and actually not even four dollars. It's one dollar for uh, four weeks, and then after that, it's like um, they charge you twenty or thirty dollar. But the course itself is like one week only, so it's one dollar. That's all you have to. Sp uh, that's all I spent. So what I did was I converted the ISO one three four eight five into a searchable copy, so that when the clause is read, I can just type in and see where that clause is in that document. Okay, that's that's all easy searching way um, that is one thing so that I did it was very helpful because these questions like only like four or five questions is there I understand the question but where this clause is clause 4.2 section a that you can't buy hard that's no human can buy hard that and so anyway and what's the point in by hearting that nothing right uh, if you know what is there in the document that's more than enough so anyway so that's why I got that and that is useful that's very useful trust me Second thing, this PowerPoint presentation, PowerPoint that they provide you, right? That like runs for 400 pages. I went through every single page because after the class ends, uh, you have to re just read it to ensure that you understand what has been taught and also prepare you for your quiz. So when I did that, what I did was I put a table of contents, just a page, right? A Word document. I just created that. What I did whatever they taught me like what are those pages when i keep going through those pages say for example page 100 it talks about audit plan details just giving you an example what i do in my document word document is in the page 100 or slide whatever it is i put audit plan details are in there literally i created a table of content even though i read it during the exam if, I, if there is like, okay, during the opening meeting of an audit, what are the most important elements? You may know, but you are like, oh my God, where did I read that in the document? I have no clue. So what I do is I, I keep this table of contents with me. And then when I see this question, uh, opening meeting, what, what are the contents? I, I go click here with my table of contents, which I created. And then say, okay, where is opening meeting? And then it will tell you page 200. So I go to the page 200 directly and see what opening meetings contain. That is excellent. Now you might ask, you can write in your own words. Great. You want to write in your own words, still great. Even if you read the slide, some of the questions you want to write in your own words only. But it helps you. It shows you where those contents are so that it is like you will remember. It, it just gives you an idea like, okay, where is where the details are to go through. 
that is the second thing i did it helped a lot a lot but then the last but not the least is some of the questions are more detailed questions meaning they will give you some of the scenarios and they will say uh, what is the non conformity here whether is it a non conformity or not what you do you really need to understand the details to write that that is why when you read these it helps a lot because you keep uh, reading everything rehearsing it and then you are writing this table of contents is so helpful right and then when you are listening in the class physically and the mentally present in the class when you go through it will be helpful because the professor talks about it in the breakout session you would have done all that and then it would uh, be very helpful to write these are the steps that i have done to pass the examination and like i said i'm a certified lead auditor now it really helpful because when i go for an interview particularly when i say even though i come from audit space uh, it's very helpful because i am an expert in software as medical devices but to say okay how medical device should be this certification helps a lot the last thing i just want to tell you is keeping two three monitors or at least two monitors is very helpful because one page you will have the questions provided and then in one you have to answer if you are keeping and then in one you have to look at the different uh, open if it's open book you have electronic copy then you have to go back and forth having one screen would drive you nuts so keep at least two screens like i had i have three screens in my office room um, for my work i work from home for a very long time like since 2018 i work from home so i created a setup a work office setup so that it really helps me to view things very clearly i hope this was helpful like i said i just made this video uh, because when i searched for it i couldn't get anything and then it was so difficult to really understand and now i thought okay if someone else is going it will be helpful so that you don't have to retake the examination taking one time is more than enough so two times is a nightmare so i hope this was helpful for you and all the best for the examination all right see you in the next video bye